Great. So if we remember from our last lecture, shape affects drag because it affects the flow, and flow is intimately related to our pressure gradients, right? Then pressure gradients on the object affect when boundary layer separation occurs, and boundary layer separation affects the size and magnitude of high and low pressure regions. And the, these high and low pressure regions tremendously affect the drag on blunt objects. We'll talk about streamlined objects in a little bit. But for now, for blunt objects, the drag is dominated by these effects. So one question I've always wanted to know was if you, let's say, fell out of a, a plane and all you had was a very large tube that was 10 meters long, what diameter of tube is necessary to give yourself a 50-50 chance of surviving a fall from a plane, all right? So there are actually a couple questions wrapped up in this. Um, you should know, this is just useful in your life, um, that the 50-50, point of running into a flat wall and surviving, well, 50-50 chance of surviving, is at 38 miles per hour, um, which is about 17 meters per second. So 38 miles per hour is our goal, 17 meters per second. We want to have our terminal velocity of our person to be this speed so that they don't die when they hit the ground. Well, they have a 50-50 chance of dying when they hit the ground. Not great. I, I would actually, I would like better chances of that, but that's what we're shooting for right now. Okay, so um, we have this long cylinder, right? And what we're shooting for is, uh, yeah, to figure out what its speed is. So. Um, the, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to do some of the forces equal to mass times acceleration. So some of the forces in the y direction, um, this is our y, this is our x direction. Some force in our y direction is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Now it's at, at, um, at uh, terminal velocity, this is equal to zero because we're not accelerating. We've reached the, velocity, the maximum velocity we're going to reach. So we're going to sum all of our forces, and what we have is we have a negative mg, which is the weight of our, our person, essentially, and we have a drag force plus fd, right, because we have a drag force occurring on our cylinder, and we have mg occurring on our person. Um, so our drag force, if we remember right, fd is equal to our drag coefficient times one half rho u squared times the area. And remember this area changes based on the object. So sometimes it's the cross-sectional area perpendicular to the flow. Sometimes it's the cross-sectional area parallel to the flow. And um, in this case, because we're dealing with form drag and we're dealing with pressure drag, we're gonna use the cross-sectional area perpendicular to the flow. Right, like that. So we can plug this into our formula and we get that our, we get that, um, yep, we get zero, uh, mass times gravity is equal to our drag coefficient times one half rho u squared times L times D. And we don't know D, we know our length, we know our velocity, we know our mass, we know our gravity. We also do not know our drag coefficient. And unfortunately, our drag coefficient is dependent upon our Reynolds number, and our Reynolds number is dependent upon our diameter. So we've done this before, we've run into this problem. We have to do an iterative solution to this problem, which is basically guess and check. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to guess a diameter of um, 0 0.1 meters. So a 10 centimeter diameter uh, pipe. Um, it's not that big, only 10 meters long, so 33 feet, 34 feet. So it's probably not gonna work, but let's try it. So uh, we guess a diameter, that leads us to a Reynolds number. 
our Reynolds number is going to be equal to 1.23 kilograms per meter cubed times our velocity, which is 17 meters per second, times our diameter, which is 0.1 meters, divided by um, 1.5 times 10 to the fifth kilograms per meter second. We get a uh, Reynolds number of 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. We don't have a formula for um, the drag coefficient uh, for an object. In fact, there's so many different objects. The second you change an object, you get a different curve. Here we have one for a smooth cylinder and one for a smooth sphere. Um, if you have a rough sphere, it changes, right? So um, we're gonna use the smooth cylinder curve here and we look at our Reynolds number, which is 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. So we go 10 to the fifth, 1.3 is gonna be about halfway. We come up here, come to this curve, and then come over. Oops. And we get a drag coefficient of about um, 1.5. So let's rearrange our equation to solve for D, because remember, whenever we, we do this, we have to rearrange our equation. Uh, we plug in a guess for our friction factor or our drag coefficient in this case, and solve for the thing we're solving for. Um, and so in that case, our drag co our diameter is going to be equal to mg divided by cd. Oops, I drew that d too big. Cd times one half rho u squared l. So we plug in our drag coefficient that we just found into this equation and solve for our new d. In our new d, or we'll call it our guess d. It's going to be equal to 0 0.36. So let's do round two. Round two, we calculate a new Reynolds number. And our Reynolds number equals, when we plug everything, nothing changes, right, except for our diameter. But our new Reynolds number is 6.37 times 10 to the fifth. We go to our new uh, our sheet here, and 6.37 times 10 to the fifth is going to be this is two, uh, right about here or so. So we do that, and then go over. We get a much lower drag coefficient. We get a CD is equal to 0 0.3, which when we plug into this equation up here, gives us a D new uh, equal to 1.8 meters. So we start over again. Our guess D is equal to 1.8 meters, which gives us a new Reynolds number of 1.1 times 10 to the sixth, which gives us a drag coefficient. If we go over here, 1.1 times 10 to the sixth is roughly here. Go over, basically following this line, we get a drag coefficient of 0 0.5. Sorry, 0 0.6. Yeah, 0 0.6. Zero, no, it's actually right in the middle, 0 0.5. Drag coefficient is 0 0.5, which when we solve for d nu, by plugging it into this equation up here, remember, we get d nu is equal to um, 0 0.90. Great, and it turns out we do this one more time and we have roughly converged um, right about here at a diameter of 0 0.9 meters. So um, you can, turns out, 
jump out of a plane with a 33 foot long, three foot diameter cylinder and have a 50-50 chance of living. Okay, so um, what happens if we streamline this cylinder? Well, we have to have a new chart, right? Because we have to do uh, a whole new set of experiments because our geometry has changed. Um, but if we streamline the cylinder, um, I'll just give you a, a, a hint here. Um, because we've streamlined it, our, uh, we don't have pressure drag anymore. So it's gonna have to be a lot larger, right? And in fact, if we go in this region right here, if we look, we know we're gonna be in a Reynolds number that's our, 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 our object is larger. So our Reynolds number is gonna be larger than it was before. We know our velocity, density, and viscosity. Um, so the only thing affecting our Reynolds number that's changing is our diameter. And we know in this case, our diameter is the length, the cord length of our streamlined object. Because remember, when drag is dominated by friction drag, we use the cord length of an object. Um, and we know that this is gonna be fairly long. So we can solve for our drag coefficient in this region, which is basically 0.01. Now, if we, if we compare that to what we got up here, our drag coefficient was 0 0.5. So already our drag coefficient is one fifth of what it was before. And if we plug that in, we solve for a diameter, or sorry, a distance D, which is equal to 54 meters. Now, importantly, this is the cord length of our object, right? Because our area is changing. It's no longer our projected area perpendicular to the flow. It's the area, projected area parallel to the flow. So our D is 54 meters parallel to the flow, but luckily we've been given the fact that our diameter for this particular shape, you know, so we, if we change this ratio, we'll have to get a whole new curve. But for this particular shape, it's 0.18D. So our diameter is equal to 9.72 meters. So um, simply by... <laughs> Streamlining our object, we go from having a three foot diameter um, cylinder to a uh, 27 foot diameter. It's basically a square, a streamlined square that is 54 meters long, right? So it's tremendously long. Um, so I wouldn't recommend trying to jump out of a plane and survive by, uh, survive by having a, uh, a streamlined object being the, your own sole source of drag. Great. So next video, we're going to talk about uh, flaps on an airplane and, and, and how flaps on an airplane affect uh, flow separation on a wing.